Hey guys, it's Monkey Bacon here from Sock Monkey Development, and today we are going to be check. We are going to be changing the color of the button and clicking on the button that we have created. Okay, so today we need to make a function, and it's going to be called function button underscore click, and then open close, and this function is going to check if we are clicking on any of the buttons that we have made. And hopefully, you guys made a quit button at the bottom, but if you didn't, or if you did, make sure you have the same coordinates as I do. How tall is our screen? Our screen is 700, so I'm going to do this at like 550, and it's going to say quit. I'm not sure how that's going to look, but I hope it looks good. And, okay. So, we are going to need to have a new function inside of main.lua. This function is going to uh, check if the mouse is clicking. Sorry, I'm kinda off right now. I haven't really reviewed what exactly I was gonna do. I kinda jumped into it. I'm homesick from school, but I'm actually feeling a little bit better. Okay, so function, it's called love.mousepressed. Open, and then inside of here, we have to use x and y. That's going to be the X and Y co coordinates of your mouse. So, obviously this tests if the mouse is being pressed. There, you can test if it's the right or the left click, but honestly, we're not, we, we don't need to do that right now. If you want to, you can check out the Love2D wiki, and you can, if you're really specific about that, but I honestly just don't really care. Okay, so, we need to get use variables for the buttons, for the button table. So to do that, we have to access the uh, button table. And we did that in the last tutorial. So for I V comma V in I pairs, open parentheses button close parentheses space two. Okay. So we're gonna end that. And okay. We need to test. Oh, this uh, function has to have X and Y in it too because we're going to be putting this function inside of this function and they both need the same arguments okay we are going to test if when you're clicking it it is if it is greater than the start of the text and it is less than the end of the text and if it is greater than the top of the text and if it is less than the bottom of the text <coughs> okay <coughs> so if that doesn't make sense now I promise it will by the time we are done typing this uh, if the, these if then statements. So we need to test if x, which is the mouse's x, is greater than v.x, which is the top left or the, the top left corner of the text, and if x is less than v.x plus. And now what we need to do is something that is going to be very helpful, and we need to test. We need to get the width of the text and test if it is less than the x plus the width of the text. So that if we if we take the, the left corner, which is x, right, v dot x, that is the very left uh, side of the text, and we add the width of the text, that'll take us all the way to the right side of the text. So we need to get the width of this text. And to do that, we have to do, we have to type, um, uh, f uh, v dot text, and then a colon, and get width with a capital W. I'm pretty sure I actually showed you guys how to do this with a picture, but now we're doing it with an image, and so we have, so we're getting the width of v dot text. So that means no matter what button it is, it's gonna even if it's a really long button, it'll still check all the same. And if, uh. X. No. And now we need to ch uh, check the Y. So you. Uh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Like I said, a little bit off for today, and I will be this week. Okay. If Y is greater than V dot Y, which is the top, and if Y is less than V dot Y, now we need to get the height plus V dot text colon get height. Then. Okay, and here's where it's going to get a little bit confusing. And I actually, we don't need these other ifs. If you're using and, you only need uh, one if. 
So delete all those ifs. Sorry about that. <coughs> I think. I'm pretty sure. I could be totally wrong. Let me just delete those for no reason. Okay. So we need to give each... There's a variable that we forgot to put inside of these buttons. And it's called ID. And we're going to be using this... So this is counts for any button. This line. This is, at, this is checking if you're clicking the text. Next thing we're going to do in here is check the ID. So if it's... If the ID is quit, then we'll quit. If the ID is start, then we'll start. If the ID is options, then we'll go to the options. And this might not make sense now, but it will make sense a little bit, like I always say. Okay. So we need to add one more uh, argument in button underscore spawn that's called ID. And then we, of course, inside of uh, the table that insert, we have to add a, col or a comma space ID equals ID. Okay. Now, when in main.lua, where we make our buttons, where we spawn our buttons, we have to add the argument. What is the ID going to be called for button spawn? We're going to call that start. It's going to be a string. It doesn't have to be a string. It can be a number variable, but I prefer string. And then the next one I'm going to do is going to be quit. I usually keep my IDs lowercase just because it makes it a little bit simpler. Because I'm not going to see the ID. It's just for uh, you, the programmer. Okay, so we will go back into our menu.lua. Now we have that ID. So now we're going to test if the ID equals quit. So if you're hit clicking the button, which is test right here, then if v.id equals equals quit, then then we're going to quit. And to do this, we type love.event.push and then open parentheses and then a string called quit and then close parentheses. And so now if you run our game, which I'll do, you guys should probably do it too. Archive.love. Be sure to follow me on Twitter if you guys want to know when the next tutorial is coming out. Or you can kick me in the face and tell me to get the next tutorial out. Uh, can be extra long stalling because my computer is kind of screwed up. Okay. So now, if we click quit, it should. Oh, oh, jeez. Come on, guys. Jeez. Oh, jeez. We need to move the button click button into love.mouse pressed. If you're awesome, you probably called that out. Oh, we also have to do game state testing. So if the game state equals menu, game state equals equals menu, then then paste and then so if the game state equals menu, then we're always checking if you're clicking the button and if you are clicking the button, then we're always checking if the ID equals quit. If that makes any sense, I really hope it does. Also, I'm probably going to start filming my Advanced tutorials today for all of you geniuses. Don't worry though, guys. If you're not a genius, you will be soon. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we're gonna keep stalling. Yeah. Um, starting a new project pretty soon. Called Adventures of a Drunken Cowboy. Can't wait for that. Okay. So now if we push quit. Oh jeez, we got an error. Menu.lua18. Let's check this out. Maybe you guys caught this. Maybe it's a typo. Oh, sorry, I forgot. We need to test... Okay, <coughs> we need to get the width of the font and the height of the font, not the text. So to do that, we have to do medium get width, and then inside of here, type v.text. So it's testing if the font is medium, how wide is this text? And we don't need to test... Uh, we don't need to enter v.text if we're getting the height of a font, because it's always the same. So... Now if we run it again, I'm gonna try to keep stalling. In case you guys didn't know I drum. I've been drumming since I was like eight, and I think I'm gonna start a Kickstarter for drum covers. If you guys would, you know, tell your friends, I'll put a link in the description if it's been made yet. Get some mics and do some covers and stuff. Okay. Here we go. Let's try. Let's try. Yay! It quits, it works. Now we just need to do one for start. And this is where it's gonna be really cool. Ah, I hope this tutorial isn't like crazy long because I want to do one more thing, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time. Okay, so it's the ID is start. So now we need to test if the ID equals start. So if v dot id equals equals start, then we are going to change the game state to uh, playing. So game if v dot e equals equals if v dot id equals equals start, then game state equals playing. I'm going to run this. You guys don't have to because you, we've been running it quite a bit lately. 
I'm running out of space on my computer. 72.13 gigabytes. Jeez. Uh, we got a new logo, if you guys have seen it. I, I think I mentioned that before. My friend says I made it. Alright, so now if we click start. Look at that! And we're running around like a freaking ninja. Um. Well, now we have our menu. I think I'm going to add one more feature in the next tutorial. And that's going to be when you're hovering, when your mouse is over one of the buttons, it's going to change colors. So the, And we can also add noise to it if you guys want to, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I might, but that's... It's not advanced, it's just kind of too short to put into a tutorial and too not important to put in it into a tutorial. We'll be covering love to audio probably in an advanced tutorial. Or actually in this one we're putting music in. Okay, hope this helped. Like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Tell your friends if you've ever wanted to make a game to check out Sock Monkey's channel. And I'm working on a new website right now, so if you guys ever wanted to learn XHTML, which is what is used to make websites. There's also some other ones, but I use H XHTML to make websites. If you guys have ever wanted to learn that, please tell me, and I'll be sure to get those tutorials off. I love 2D. It's always going to be my main focus until I'm done with it. going to start the advanced tutorials soon. I'm talking so fast. Hope this helped.